Hello, everybody. I'm Stefano D'Angelo from Orastron, a small company in Italy doing DSP. And I'm presenting for the second time today the poster for the paper Antiderivative Anti Aliasing with Frequency Compensation for Stateful Systems. So, in a nutshell, um, the general idea is that we don't have internet, so we don't have formulas. Very good. Um, we have a static nonlinearity in the digital domain. Um, and a, a static nonlinearity, we know that will generally introduce aliasing when applied to any signal. Um, uh, one obvious way to reduce the aliasing in the output signal that you get from this nonlinearity would be to oversample, and that's the standard technique that's been used for many, many years. But lately, we have had um, other approaches to this uh, problem. Um, that substitute uh, the static uh, nonlinearity with a di dynamic nonlinear structure, which has some peculiarities. Uh, essentially, this structure uh, will affect the frequency, will, will be dynamic, so it will have a non flat frequency response. Uh, and this is a, an issue when using this sort of things within um, stateful systems because that will, um, gener will cause a modification of the frequency response of the uh, system that we're dealing with and possibly also stability problems. So one basic idea would be that to add a compensating inverse filter in series with this dynamic nonlinear structure that substitutes our static nonlinearity. Um, in order to, as I said, use uh, these sort of things within a stateful system and reduce the aliasing. So, uh, unluckily, we don't have formulas. <laughs> well, but whatever. I mean, one basic, um, I mean, the first approach to this problem in a way that's different from our sampling was proposed by Parker in 2016, and uh, it involves the use of antiderivatives of the original static nonlinearity. So if we linearize it, we will have a filter, <laughs> which is essentially the moving average of the present input value and the previous input value which, if you can imagine the formula, will be clearly minimum phase and not invertible. And we have similar outcomes at higher orders. So essentially, we cannot use uh, this inverse filtering technique uh, with the method developed by Par Parker and others back then. But it will be even worse now. Um, <laughs> A couple of years ago at DAFEX, me, my co-author Pierpaolo La Pastina and Leonardo Gabrielli from University of Ancona proposed uh, to use rather than a, an FIR filter for um, uh, the anti-aliasing part in the original method by Parker to use instead an IIR filter of any order or in any kind. We did all the computation and so on. And this leads to an um, IIR formulation in the digital domain for the anti-aliasing anti part. Now, we are all interested in the poles uh, to, to know if the, this um, linearization of this method is invertible. And we found out that when using a simple real pole, it will actually be invertible as long as the pole that you choose is a stable pole, so in the left-hand uh, side of the S-plane. Um, but for higher orders, um, we found out that this is not the case, uh, so we cannot use still um, such an approach for uh, uh, compensating the static linearity and whatever I said before. Uh, so um, we investigated a little bit the issues, and we have uh, the issue, and we found out that it's probably the digital to analog reconstruction step that it's embedded inside these methods that is to blame, uh, which indeed is uh, linear interpolation, which uh, probably has a problem of accuracy that translates into a stability problem later on. So uh, still, we could apply our method with the simple real pole directly on the infamous circuit here. And we found out a few things that I will not spoil so that you will come to see the poster, but the most relevant of them is that the discretization choice itself, apart from uh, the whatever technique you use, will affect the aliasing. And then it will also affect, therefore, the anti-aliasing performance of the method. So that's it.